While the lives led by the monks of Tintern Abbey were hard and tiring, so were those of the serfs who farmed the fields. There were more serfs 1,000 years ago than all the other social classes combined. The serfs owned no land. Instead, they farmed long strips within great fields belonging to their masters. They were allowed to keep most of their produce. The church, however, took its share in tithes, and the landlord required a certain number of days' labor each week in his fields. The serfs dwelt in small villages, which often grew up within sight of a castle. In times of danger, the serfs could seek safety behind the castle walls. Because the lord of the castle provided the serfs both with protection and with the land to work, the serfs were said to be bound to the land. If the land was sold, the serfs were sold with it. Like all large medieval land holdings, those belonging to Chepstow Castle and Tintern Abbey were subdivided into smaller units called manors. A typical manor consisted of a fortified house, a church, a village, and a few farms. The lord of the manor could be a knight, son, brother, or uncle of the lord of the castle. Manor villages were separated by many miles of rough road through dark forests. News traveled slowly, and as a result, the villagers' world seemed small. Most serfs rarely traveled beyond the borders of their manor lands. Villages were self-sufficient, producing everything they needed from food to clothing to furniture. Village women in the Middle Ages helped in the fields, but because they were often pregnant or looking after children, their work focused on life at home. Women sewed clothing, cooked, mended, tended the fire, and preserved food, keeping their families warm, happy, and properly fed. The main work of the village men was raising grain. It's not surprising, therefore, that most manors possess their own mills for making flour. The laws governing the milling of grain are typical of a way a serf's life was regulated by the customs of the manor. A serf was required to pay to have his grain turned into flour at the Lord's Mill. Serfs caught grinding grain with their own hand mills were fined and their mills were destroyed. Serfs had to take their flour to the baker to be made into bread. Only one person was allowed to perform this skilled task here in the village bakehouse. The baker, like other craftsmen, was a free man and was not bound to the land like the lowly serfs. Many other laws shaped the life of a medieval peasant. Hunting in the Lord's forest was forbidden, for the Lord reserved the wild game for his family and friends alone. Serfs were not even allowed to hunt the doves which flew throughout their villages. Doves were considered the Lord's property, and every manor house had a nearby dovecot where these birds were raised for meat, eggs, and the fertilizer they created. It's easy to see why the often hungry serfs resorted to poaching game, the most common offense in the Middle Ages. Even rules governing the gathering of wood were very strict. Not one stick could be gathered before paying the Lord his annual wood penny, and even then only dead and fallen limbs could be taken. The Lord of the Manor also regulated the use of grazing land. Common land, the village green, was set aside for use by the serfs' animals. The Lord and the church even managed to increase their wealth at the serfs' expense upon his death. At this time, his heirs were required to give the Lord his best animal as a death tax. And the church took his second best animal as a death gift, called a mortuary. Life on the medieval manor was not easy, but most serfs did not question their roles in society. There were pleasant times, like Christmas, when they received gifts from the Lord, and they were given feasts at harvest times. Medieval villagers, although very poor, also found pleasure in their families and friends. The church taught that poverty itself was noble, 
and no doubt most of them believed that the suffering they endured on earth would earn them a special place in heaven.